Alright, what's up guys? Sorry I forgot to record yesterday, but uh, today is the second day. Today is Tuesday. Uh, I just want you guys to know how to buy a new belt because my current one works for one. Second of all, it was not reliable. So as you can see, little pieces here, one, two. This piece broke off of this piece. Fabricated a little piece of metal and drilled it into the two, <laughs> two spots. But then the screws were too long. As you can see, like the belt's kind of like cut in half right here. Cut like a little square out of the belt, shoved it into the other side, and then screwed it in. And then now it works. It worked great for a while. So it took a lot of force. I'm gonna share that with y'all, my struggles. Because I was on a plane with this freaking belt, and these little edges are very sharp on my waist. It was very uncomfortable. So the thing we're working on right now, a couple of PTZ cameras, a controller, an audio board, a new multi-view monitor, I guess I should say. And then we're on our way to the job site right now. We got there yesterday. Didn't really do anything, but figure out how to do it. Oh yeah, here's the new belt. We got our necessities here. Coffee and food. So here's the church. Got your camera right there, there's a camera right there, and there's a camera right there. So what I'm working on right now is that camera over there. I gotta put the mount on. The one in the middle right here is actually gonna go on top, so that's not gonna be too hard. Although we do have to go get some extra cables for it. And then the camera over three is also gonna be just like the camera over here on the left side, except the cable run is basically just gonna go to the opposite side right there. So that cable's gonna go all the way over there, and then that cable's just gonna run through. So not too long of a cable on that one. Here's the mounting system it's like a little anti-shock mounting bracket as you can see not too much to it but a little camera holder this is the most important part however this is the anti-shock rubber mount and as you can see there's like little these little AB screws right here as well and these little itty bitty like rubber mounts which go on top of the little washer walking over to the little zone right here where I'm installing said camera and camera mounting bracket. By the way, the name of these are hilarious. Nigel B. Anti-Vibration Multi-Camera Mounting Bracket. But yeah, it's up there. It's a little guy. And then those are the cables sticking out. It's three Cat6 cables and then on the other side. That's what we'll be doing over there. Cool. I mean, let's get freaking started, bro. Okay, so there you go. That's how you put that on. I I still have to terminate those three cat six cables. I mean, you'll see me do that. And 
I know some of you guys will probably freak out and be like, why the heck did you put zip toggles on there? There's wood. Well, let me show you. If you can see, this particle board right here is crazy thin. Crazy thin. So if I put this big lag through it, it would have, A, probably ripped up this wood up and down, and B, probably just shredded it, and the threads wouldn't actually hold anything. So I decided to drill a hole, put some zip toggles on it, so that way it can actually hold it in place. And you're also probably wondering why I talked about the shock mount on the back, and I didn't put the shock mount on the back. So thankfully these actually come with um, and they, I guess the manufacturer really thinks about it. They come with these little anti-shock rubber rings that you can put on the screws. And the screws are long enough to reach the zip toggles. So if, if you can't put that shock, like the anti-shock uh, rubber mat on the back, because it makes it too long to reach the zip toggles, you can put these little rings on in front of the washers and those act like the same thing. So that's why I did that. Okay, so a couple of things for you uh, future installers out there. My buddy James actually came up with a really good point. And James is actually up there. He's drilling a hole right now. But uh, he was like, maybe the ground is inconsistent from the top. And he was right. So what he means by that is we want these PTZ cameras to be at the same height. So. The one over there, obviously the one in the middle is gonna be a different height, so we're not gonna worry about that. But the one from the left and the one from the right are gonna be at different heights. And he was like, well, don't measure from the ground to the PTZ camera, because one would think, oh, you want it at the same height, you measure from the ground and up, and then you match it over there. And sure as the sunrise, he was right. I measured it from the ground at the top of the balcony over there, and it's actually two inches of difference. Sorry, an inch and a half of difference. So what I'm gonna do is measure from the PTZ camera to the bottom of the balcony because I put the uh, level on the balcony and the balcony is pretty level. Um, so I'm gonna measure from the PTZ camera to the bottom of the balcony and then I'm gonna do the same thing over there. And also, this is also super rare. I measured it and it's 16 inches exactly and it's four inches exactly from the little beam. So that's what we'll be doing. So. Sometimes you gotta have a friend around that's smarter than you. So, surround yourself with smarter friends, I guess. Well, dang it, guys, I'm sorry. Uh, I thought the camera was recording. Turns out <coughs> it was just on and not recording. Um, I can't really recut a hole, but I can show you what the hole looks like and how it looks like, I guess, not covered up by the, the mount. Here it is, nothing special. It's a pretty ugly hole, I know, but it'll get covered by a big old frame. It'll be nice and square and pretty, just like that one over there. I'm just saying, it's, if you ever want to install audio video stuff, you have to label your boxes correctly or else you go to Best Buy and you buy $100 worth of cable. Ridiculous. Unreal. 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 All right, so a little Texas boy. Out here in Indiana, man. All right, let's try this Mission Barbecue. People won't shut up about it. Ooh. Check it, check it. I thought it. that said Babylon for something. Black cherry. Dude, all these sodas and a Yoohoo, and I freaking want water. Got everything you need, man. See, this is how you do it. That's how you do it. Lids, got your straws, your sugar. Hold that, yeah. What do you need? What do you need? I got it all, I got it all. Hey, stay hydrated. Stay hydrated. I don't look too bad. I kind of found this necklace one. Dude, that glaze on there looks beautiful. <laughs> James, how's your mac and cheese? <laughs> By our lives, that was pretty good.
Dude, you know I'm about to get down on this. I had to try it. So if anyone ever tells you that advertising doesn't work, they're lying. Crumbs, man. I also just absolutely love cherry cheesecake. That's damn good. <clears throat> All gone. Crazy good. All right, well, now that we're done getting these extensive ass cables and eating some pretty good barbecue. Nap time. Yeah, nap time. Don't ask me how I know this, but at night, if you go down there, it's pretty creepy, yeah. All right, let's make some freaking cat six cables. We do the other side. Gosh, guys, why do you make me make such a mess? Also, isn't this stained glass just like freaking gorgeous? Stained glass is awesome. Man. So cool. Uh, nice and clean, but now let's do the other side. All right, guys, don't judge. Now it's time to open up these cables. And who knows how long they probably sat in the warehouse coiled up like this. It's going to be a bitch to make them straight. Oh, that's going to be a spring right there. Yeah, a <laughs> spring. Osha, where you at? <laughs> so that whole time I was in photo mode. I just took a photo of myself and I was looking at the camera and I thought, you know, I was recording, but I was not. Well, I drew this short straw, I guess. I gotta drive all the way back to the shop, which is only like an hour and 20 minutes, so you guys are gonna laugh at me, but. Uh, I gotta pick up connectors, I gotta pick up some cable, I gotta pick up uh, some devices that we all missed um, for for the PTZ cameras and getting audio from the board all the way to the Blackmagic video switcher. Uh, all in all, 
It's not gonna be too bad, but let's get to driving. All right, so we got our stuff. I actually switched out the car. We're sorry, switched out the van that we had because the van was too big uh, to a truck, which is way better. But uh, we got our stuff. All that stuff that I was talking about all up in here. The decimators are in that box along with everything else. You know, stuff, stuff, stuff. Blah, 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 blah. You probably don't actually care. I mean, I'll open up the box, obviously, and install it and show you how I do that. But switch it out. And now even more driving. What is this? This is day three, right? It was Wednesday, right? So it's day three. All right, so day three is a success. Guys. Lightweight. Lightweight. Back to the matter at hand. Got all the difficult stuff. My boy James over here. Got all the cabling done, all the power done, all the difficult stuff done. Audio boards done. The connection to the PTC cameras are done and those are working. Let's see here, what else? All the connections to the audio board are working. We got the wireless up and running. Oh, and we figured out the... Uh, <laughs> Amp the power, power The power distro. Yeah, that thing. Well, that so turns out it just took a person who has no idea what he's doing, uh, just randomly plugging stuff in. <laughs> And then, sorry, how about, there's a little light. Just randomly plugging stuff in, and then we figure out, oh, that thing connects to that thing, which connects to that thing. Um, all right, and then now we're gonna go get some food. Yay, more driving. Look at this. Look at that thing. Oh. Bro, it's like the size of my shoe. Ego. <laughs> All right, well, the coolest thing about traveling is the per diem that you get. However, the worst thing about traveling after you get the per diem is the receipts. So, I'm gonna take it one at a time, turn out these receipts. Got my receipts done. Day three done. And pretty much everything else is just programming and like setting little dials, making everyone happy, but everything, all the hard work pretty much is done. Uh, James pretty much did all the hard work while I did all the annoying work, I would say. I drove probably most of the time while he did most of the like annoying like power and like dressing in the cables. I think he did a great job. Oh, I need to do, I need to do a final sweep. So here's that. After you work hard, you gotta play even harder. Oh Elden Ring, man. The game everyone loves to hate. All right, lessons to learn when you're a, uh, I'm putting this in quotes too, professional audio, video, and lighting integrator. Sometimes when you uh, integrate the new, sometimes it's just not gonna work with the old equipment. Let me give you an example here. iMac, right? The really nice PTZ camera controller. And we got, you know, the Blackmagic switching software. I'll go ahead and flip it around. So we got the PTZ uh, CCUs, uh, the camera control units, and then we got the Blackmagic here going. It's really nice. But then they wanted to implement this DVD player, and guess what? It doesn't do 1080p 60fps. 
And two guesses as to what format we're in. In order for said devices to work, it's a 1080p 60fps, so that won't work. Uh, and they also have some sort of Matriox, I think is how you pronounce that, streaming software device platform. And it was probably on and never moved for decades, maybe. Maybe, yeah, maybe decades. Maybe not decades, maybe a decade and a half. We'll go decade and a half. And, and then obviously installing this stuff, we had to unplug it and move it. And now it is crashing and not doing so well on the uh, working side of things. So. Old and slow, don't keep up with young and fast. Yeah, that's right. Old and slow, you're out. Okay, now that we got pretty much everything up and running and checked, let's dive into why churches and schools and everyone upgrades from the old archaic analog system to the new digital system. And there's really four key components as to why. The fourth one being kind of, it depends on who you ask, how about that? And the first one is obviously you're switching from the analog to the digital state. And that in and of itself is a major key. And again, depending on who you ask, you have better quality per tools at your disposal. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. Obviously, like I said, depending on who you ask, they will say analog is better than digital currently in terms of how it sounds. And I would say, yeah, it really depends on what you're talking about, but sure, I agree. I know where you're coming from, but that's why I said per tool at your disposal, meaning, I have pretty much everything on here. Preamp, high pass frequencies, I got gates, I got compressors, I got you know a full multiband EQ. That is a great segue into the second reason. Number two, processing. Processing is huge with these digital boards. I mean, look at the X32, you have a 32 in, 16 out I do believe for what, 2,500, three grand, and you have a fully functioning operating board with tons of processing on it. You have not only gates and compressors and uh, good preamps and uh, multiband EQ, but you also have built-in effects such as reverb, you have delay, you have chorus and modulation. Number three would be the ease of routing. Uh, let me tell you, anybody who, uh, even, even the people who think the analog boards sound better than the digital board, they will straight up agree with you on the routing part. Routing is a just no brainer when it comes to digital. Now you have everything at your fingertips and if I want this channel to be input one, I can. If I want this channel to be input 16, I can. So on and so forth with the outputs. And number four, that's why I said it kind of depends, uh, is expandability. And this is why it really depends on who you ask because expandability, you could say the same thing about analog. Uh, you know, yes, of course I can expand it if I have $30,000 and I can buy pretty much whatever I want. Um, with digital, I would say your expandability is phenomenal at the price point. Uh, of course, with analog systems, yes, you can keep expanding and expanding, but uh, you know, more power consumption, more power consumption, more power consumption. That's that's basically all my brain hears. But with with digital, now I can run a single Cat6 cable with the S-Link on the back of this uh, Allen and Heath SQ7 all the way to the front of stage and have a 16 in, 16 out, I do believe, uh, breakout box with one cable and one piece of equipment. That's all it takes. And with analog, you probably can't do that. There might be some cases with multi-pin connectors, but it's not digital. And it's definitely not a tiny cable. But uh, that's the reason, I would say that's the reason why most churches, most schools, most people, most venues are switching from the old archaic analog systems to the digital systems and you will see them less and less.
All right, man, it feels good to have everything. Ooh, echoey, wow. Man, it feels good to have everything wrapped up and done. Okay, so now all that's left is, no ceiling. Now all that's left is to come back later after we've wined and dined uh, and do some training for these guys. They get, um, get them all up to speed on all their new toys and all their new devices. It'll be fun. It will be quite an experience for them. I feel like with their old stuff, it might be a little, I would say a tad bit overwhelming with all the new capabilities and devices that we just put in. But uh, overall, I'm kind of excited to see uh, the shocking looks on their faces.